My faith story is really one of continued growing awareness of my sin and my need for a savior and the beauty of God's grace. I grew up in a Christian home and my parents were both great examples of the faith and excellent at discipling me by asking me questions. My dad was uh, especially good. He's a band teacher, so as a teacher, uh, he taught me by asking me questions that helped me think through my faith. So from a very young age, I was able to make my faith my own and know not just what I believed, but why I believed it. Uh, when I was four years old, I came out of my room, told my parents I wanted to be a pastor and a missionary, and they were like, great, go play, because, you know, what else do you say to a four-year-old when they tell you their career path? Uh, but literally, ever since then, there's nothing else I wanted to be. I knew that God had called me to ministry. My favorite ministry accomplishment was growing the volunteer team from 35 to 50 adult volunteers over the course of a summer. Uh, it's one of my favorites because it showed me that I could do something that I thought was incredibly difficult and an extreme challenge for me. I uh, took a class and, and learned how to manage and recruit volunteers. I created a system of texting and calling and emailing uh, potential volunteers and inviting them to uh, coffee. I created an onboarding process and a training process all to improve uh, my recruiting. And it gave me confidence that one of my biggest roles in kids kids ministry and one of my hardest roles I could do well and I had a system and a plan to do it well. The kids in my kids ministry all thought I was silly and goofy and just a fun person to hang around. They loved coming up to me and showing me what they can do and and seeing my responses. Uh, they loved how engaging my teaching was and, and uh, how, how much fun they had acting out the stories and being a part of it. Um, so I was just incredible with kids and everyone could see that. I am more of a strategic leader. I love uh, thinking big and then bringing that down into a strong plan uh, with great structures and systems uh, to, to move forward a, a very strategic outlook to things. And so in Casting Vision, I'd love to start with our three big whys. The first, that God loves kids, that He is madly in love with kids and He wants to see them have a relationship with Jesus. And so when we do kids ministry, we get to do what God loves. The second big why is that childhood is the most strategic time in a person's life. Yeah, there's the word strategic again. It's where uh, ch a person's beliefs and habits and dreams and character is built. And so when you get to pour into kids, you get to shape someone's entire life. Uh, and then the third is there is no such thing as a junior Holy Spirit. The same Holy Spirit that works to convict adults and change adults' hearts and minds uh, and to bring them to salvation works in kids. And so we know that our ministry can be successful. And so I share these visions and these whys and then um, I look for great strategies to uh, uh, recruit volunteers so I would uh, I have a strategy of, of texting and calling and emailing potential volunteers and asking them out to coffee where I could share that vision and and hear their story and find the perfect place for them I love uh, you, the pipeline leadership um, strategy of creating coaches and, and leaders of leaders and, and really uh, using that to, to build the leadership capacity of the volunteer team and, and building a strategic leadership team around you that, that uh, is focused on, on improving the overall strategy of the ministry. Um, I, I love um, setting people up and, and giving them opportunities to do their own thing and try new things and experiment and, uh, and, and take things where it needs to go. And, and so um, all those things uh, combine to uh, be a really strategic approach to building relationships with the leaders and giving them opportunities to lead.
I'm a quiet person and that is often mistaken for a lack of engagement, a lack of involvement, um, a lack of social skills. Um, I, I don't like um, sharing ideas that aren't fully developed or that I'm not in love with myself. And so um, when I'm part of brainstorming in, in teams, I, I tend to just sit and, and wait quietly until I have the idea fully and then it just kind of comes out and uh, in kind of an overwhelming, I've solved all the problems. Uh, sort of way and so I'm learning uh, how to just just speak up even when I'm not excited about my own idea um, just to share and just be a part. Uh, the second thing is I've just been growing immensely and developing immensely as a leader um, but I know that next step is building uh, uh, the leadership team and pouring into those who lead others through that coaching pipeline structure and so um, I was beginning to put that in place and, and that will be the first thing that I do in the new church to really uh, begin that process of pouring into leaders of leaders. My approach to goal planning is to set smart goals that are specific, measurable, attainable, uh, that relate to what we're doing and are timely. And so for example, when I was leaving, uh, I had began to sit, set a three to five year um, timeline and goal of creating a, a fully sustainable children's ministry, one that could be ran effectively without me there. And so uh, I knew that that involved uh, building up the leadership structure, um, improving the leadership team around me, uh, casting greater vision and making sure everyone is aware of the, the vision for not just the big things that we do in ministry, but uh, all the small things. Uh, having a clear record of, of everything that I did in the kids ministry that someone else could take on and, um, and making sure all the systems and structures were up and working properly and so uh, so I created um, smaller goals from that in, in terms of uh, six months then one one year steps uh, to be achieved um, in, in planning that out and, and building those things so I like to start with uh, the big idea and, and move down uh, further and further into smaller more attainable goals I love competition. I'm a pretty competitive guy, and so all sports and games are just incredibly fun for me. Uh, baseball is my favorite sport. I'm a big Angels fan, a big Mike Trout fan, but I love uh, basketball, football, um, all, uh, all of them. I love to play them, watch them. I also love um, card games and strategy games. Just uh, one of my favorite times is just sitting with friends and, and playing a, a fun game together and so anything that gets my competitive juices flowing I love. So I didn't know that I was called to children's ministry until I was at this church called uh, Journey Church and I was in one of those roles where I did anything that the lead pastor didn't want to do and one of those things was uh, kids ministry. And as soon as I started in kids ministry, it was this activation moment for me. It's where I realized all my gifts and talents and skills all came together in kids ministry. And I realized I was made for kids ministry. And I completely fell in love with it. Uh, and so um, I, I can't really see myself in anything else. I have the long-term goal of, of seeing um, a kid that started out as a preschooler or younger in my ministry enter into middle school and high school and to really evaluate uh, if, what, if what I'm doing to establish a strong foundation in kids is working. <laughs> I've never worked at a church that had a preschool or a school in its building, um, but I would imagine that it creates great opportunities to build relationships with other people and to uh, and to pour into more people uh, and more kids and families um, than you would in any other way. 
um, but I can also see it taking over and uh, taking over time and resources and um, and its vision overcoming the church's vision if it's not handled well. So uh, there's a lot of strategy and strategic leadership that needs to happen to partner well with the school and the preschool. At Faith Church, we grew our kids ministry from 70 kids to about 90 kids, and it's a church that was declining in regular attendance. And so our strategy was really to focus on improving the quality of the kids ministry first. Make it something that kids are excited about and really want to come to, uh, creating wow moments from the environment to the relationship to the relationships that the kids can have, to the fun and exciting things that go on, uh, to silly things like sliming me that makes kids go and parents go, wow, this is awesome. I want to be a part of this. And when kids are excited about something, they become just incredible evangelists. Uh, we also had great success with uh, the Mother of Preschoolers program. Uh, it connected with families who really uh, were just in those transition phases where they really began to explore their faith and explore what it means to be parents and lead their children to Christ. And, and MOPS did a great job of reaching those families. I created sort of a rhythm in my kids' ministry um, that really helped me organize my time and my schedule. Uh, I would come in on, on Tuesday, and Tuesday would be uh, a meeting day where I met uh, with the staff and the pastors, with uh, my assistant, with, with my direct supervisor, and, uh, and so the only time was mostly filled with uh, meetings and then uh, doing some, some catch-up emails and things like that on Tuesday. On Wednesday, we had our big Wednesday night program, and so uh, most of my time on Wednesday was dedicated to that program, uh, setting up for that, that night and also um, thinking ahead and, and planning in, um, in, on the Wednesday night program. Uh, Thursdays were about communication um, for me and so I tried to schedule uh, meetings with volunteers on Thursday. I also um, would do my recruiting, sending out those texts and emails and things on Thursday. Uh, and then I would write my weekly email for uh, volunteers and my weekly email for be edited and sent out on Monday. Uh, Friday would be more um, relationships, more uh, meetings with volunteers and uh, time spent on big picture thinking, uh, trying to plan, plan the next big event or um, thinking big about goals um, or the overall strategy of the kids ministry. So I tried to set a time, uh, that time every week to, uh, to be thinking ahead or be thinking uh, big picture. And then Sunday was uh, all about Sunday. So there are a lot of factors that go into deciding what your Sunday morning program looks like um, and creating a Sunday morning program that fits uh, your church and, and your kids. So I can't really tell you what it should look like. I'll tell you what we did at Faith and, uh, and why we did it. Um, first, we um, had check-in. So uh, we made sure that we, uh, we provide the safety and security and also that great um, first impression for visitors. Uh, then we worshiped together as a whole church. So um, the kids got to witness their parents modeling uh, worship and tithing and communion. Um, and, and the parents got to be a, a great example of how to worship God. Uh, then when the pastor came up, we would um, 
go into our age graded classrooms. We had a preschool and kindergarten, a uh, first through fourth grade, and a fifth and sixth grade, uh, where we would uh, work on our monthly memory verse and then go into uh, the story. And we always tried to use a method that engaged kids in the story, whether they were acting it out or drawing it out or providing sound effects. Um, or so that they weren't just looking at a screen or just sitting there listening, um, but they got to be a part of um, the story and be engaged in it. And then there was normally time for one learning activity to help uh, kids apply the lesson, um, often a, a little game or a, a pretty easy crap um, before parents came and picked them up. I love BBS. Uh, I love the fact that there's just a dedicated week of intense training for kids. And I love the fact that kids BBS hopped in. I BBS hopped as a kid going to five or six uh, during the summer and uh, it was extremely formative for me. And so um, I love those um, those things. At Faith Church we had a music and drama camp where the kids learned a musical in an entire week and so they got to sing and, and learn their lessons uh, about Jesus through song and through uh, great lines in a play, um, which is awesome. I would say that I am someone who uh, has the simple church uh, approach and uh, while a few uh, big outreach events are always um, great ways to bring excitement. Um, it can also be extremely um, burdensome and wear down your volunteer base. And so um, it's important to keep those things um, few and in a good space between so it doesn't wear down your volunteers. Yeah, in my few years of ministry, I've had uh, several opportunities to counsel people and uh, encourage them to take steps in their faith. Um, I don't have any formal training in counseling. I've taken just a couple counseling classes, uh, um, but not significant training. Um, but I, I try to take uh, the same approach I would with a volunteer, kind of a coaching method, uh, to ask good questions, to, to listen, um, to use active listening, and to help them uh, discover their own solutions to issues instead of just uh, hearing what I think. So on Wednesday nights, we had the awesome opportunity to bring in about half our kids from the community through our connection with the Syrian refugee um, church, and uh, so it led to our kids ministry being 50-50 uh, uh, kids uh, from the church and kids from the community, uh, and, uh, and white, 50-50 white and, and black, which was just awesome and great uh, kingdom experience. But um, bringing in kids with low church or no church experience uh, was filled with a lot of difficult children and a lot of behavior issues and so we had to work really hard to improve um, the behavior expectations for our leaders and for kids and we did that by um, establishing clear rules but more importantly establishing a clear process of discipline and on Wednesday nights I would repeat uh, that that the rules and the process of discipline is really simple. Um, one morning, uh, a remo uh, moving to uh, another spot away from a friend who might be causing the issue, um, a removal from activity, and then sending to me. And when they sent to me, um, I would just sit down and have a conversation with them and then um, have them sit to the side for a little bit. Uh, I, I would never counsel a child or a family out of the church. Um, or, yeah, because uh, the church is where they will receive hope and, and life and um, the Holy Spirit uh, to change their hearts and their minds. And so um, counseling out of the church would never be an option. Um, besides uh, sending it out, it tends to remove your authority to handle the situation. 
and uh, kids will respect your authority if uh, your moves send them out. And so um, I try to handle it with, uh, with that simple method and then when it gets to me, um, trying to use some love and logic um, and building a relationship um, with good conversation. So at Faith Church, we had um, a big new vision to improve our small group ministry and to improve the quality of our kids program. But that meant a big change, which meant removing our Sunday school program that sat between our two services. And so um, I had to have a lot of one-on-one -on -one conversations with uh, with leaders uh, about this new vision and some were excited about it, some um, jumped on board, um, but others were um, were concerned and others didn't like the change. And so um, I had to have some of those conversations of, hey, uh, this is the direction we're going. Uh, this is where we um, see the things are best and we would love to have you be a part of it uh, but we understand if, if you can't and so a few um, had to leave that way and it was tough but uh, if you have a good vision that you believe in uh, you you have to bring on people who, who believe in that vision too so to close off I just uh, want to reiterate my calling to kids ministry. I have a clear and passionate calling to kids ministry. I know that God made me for kids ministry and I have seen God bless that calling and I know that he will bless that calling in the future. And so I invite you to take a step uh, towards that calling. Um, take a step towards recognizing the, the calling that God has placed um, on your church and um, I would love to continue having a conversation with you.